These are my favorite Japanese street food hidden gem spots in Kyoto's Arashiyama. So I'm back here in Kyoto's Arashiyama. I have actually haven't done a video at this spot for several years, so I thought it was time to do a new video. There's so many street food spots here that some of them are just hidden in plain sight. So I wanted to show you these hidden gems. Can't wait to show you now. So Arashiyama is located in the western part of Kyoto city, about 20 to 30 minutes by train from Kyoto station, and it's undoubtedly one of the area's most scenic spots, with timeless picturesque views throughout the season making it a go-to spot for many Japanese, families and couples alike. Over time, it's developed into a street food lover's paradise, stretching from Togetsukyo Bridge to Arashiyama station. And today, I'm sharing with you my latest favorite hidden street food gem assassins, hiding like ninjas in plain sight among the countless shops in the area. This is the perfect weather. It's about 23 degrees right now and it's kind of like mid-October. So if you are planning to come here, this is probably like the best time just because, you know, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, the sun's out. It's just so nice. Number one, fried yuba skewers from Yuba Cheese Hompo. This spot has been in Arashiyama for 70 years now. And let me show you why it has that staying power. This must-try food shop is on the Togetsu Kyo Bridge side, and they serve a variety of hot fried fish cakes made by traditional Japanese chefs using the freshest of fish and fused with Kyoto specialty ingredients. It's egg and flour free, so it's very kid and halal friendly. First, you select your skewer of choice at the ticketing machine and then hand the ticket to the lady at the counter. She'll expertly fry your skewer on the spot, and just a few moments later, you'll be served that freshly fried good good. I got the bag of goodies! I threw down on two of their hard hitters, Yuba Cheese and the Spicy Cuttlefish, and Leek. Okay, so this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't have some fried loveliness. This is the Yuba and Cheese. You can just see how precious this thing looks. Look at this little fried bubbles right here around the Yuba Cheese. Let me just take a bite. I just can't wait for this one. That crispy outer shell of the Yuba, and then it just contains all of that soft, melty cheese in the middle. This is perfect. Not quite sure what kind of cheese that is, but it's cheese nonetheless, and it is delicious. Mmm, it is so good. Lovely, you wanna try this? Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> yeah. One more, one more? Ate all of that is. <laughs> so this one here is a fish cake with leek and it's spicy at the same time. And you know I love spicy food as you can tell from this shirt. Obviously you guys can get this shirt. Paolo from Tokyo Premium Kaminari hot sauce coming in. You can get it at the merch shop. Let's take a bite of this. Mm, that is good. The fish cake itself has kind of like a nice sweetness to it. There's a lot of nita in here, but it's not like too strong. It's a little bit spicy. I actually would prefer it to be a little bit more spicy. For those that like a mellow spiciness, then this is perfect. Okay, so let me just throw a little bit of my palo from Tokyo hot sauce on here. Always gotta shake it up a little bit. Just like that. Ooh, one more drop. There we go. Mm. That is a fire that I was looking for. You know, bring it along wherever you go, throw it in to anything you want, and it just adds that fire and umami. It matches perfectly with this fried fish cake. Obviously, you can get the hot sauce at Paolo from TokyoHotSauce.com. So, this place right here is pretty cool. We're right just by the station, which is right here and these little poles just surrounding me actually light up at night so if you are here at night you might want to check this spot out for just kind of like a picturesque moment number two dango from terracoya hompo so this spot has some unique dango flavors let me show you this spot is a mochi rice ball and rice cracker specialty shop located inside of the Akogaria shopping facility. It offers fun and colorful mochi balls on a stick called dango, and it always has fun seasonal items so you can enjoy their unique balls all throughout the year. Yomogi dango. Ato, 
Look at all the variety that we have. You don't see this everywhere. So right here, the first one with the green underbelly, Yomogi Dango, and then Yaki Imo Dango, which is a roasted sweet potato. Finally, we have the Hanami Dango, which is four different flavors. Let's go with the one in the middle right here. Let's take a bite. Wow, you can taste that roasted sweet potato. What's nice about it, it has natural sweetness. It doesn't taste like they've added like a whole bunch of sugar to it. It is sweet nonetheless, but it's not like super, super sweet. Like, like wow, where does all the sugar come from? It's that natural sweetness of the potato. And I like how the top right here, they have these little pieces of the sweet potato and then they have the sweet potato mashed on top. That is delicious. The mochi is cooked perfectly. And these are all, obviously it's served cold. Even though, you know, they roast it, these are actually all, all chilled. Let's talk about the these lovely green joys right here. You would think that this is, looks like matcha, but it's actually not. This is yomogi. The translation says wormwood. I don't even know if that's right. Yeah, wormwood. Let's just take a bite. Yomogi is actually not too strong. It blends really well. And the Anko, it's not strong either. It's like not a strong sweetness. So it's just a very rounded and even taste. I got a little helper coming. He's gonna let me know what he thinks. You like it? Yeah. Yeah? So he's too young to eat the mochi, but he loves the anko. So now, panadango is chestnut, roasted sweet potato, and black sesame. And it even has little beads on here, little pearls of wisdom, but probably more like sugar. Oh, hmm. That chestnut is really nice. Wow, so that's all natural. And like, you know, they say chestnut and stuff, but it's all mixed in with anko. And then you do get the little crunchy sugar pieces in there as well. The one I'm really excited for here is the sesame. Mmm. Now I really like the black sesame. It is a little bit sweeter. And what's nice about the sesame too is that you can see that there's a little bits of sesame seeds in there. Like you can just enjoy the texture. What a treat. This next spot is just over the bridge. Number three, Kyoto Pudding from Fukushichi. So this hidden gem just behind me has been around since only this February, but they have them pudding hitters. Let me show you. It's located next to Arashiyama Park on the south side. They make a unique pudding using white bean paste with Kyoto's specialty ingredients. It's so unique I had to include it. They have seven kinds of pudding all assigned to their own god called Shichi Fukujin. <laughs> Also, the shop has their toppings only after you place the order, so you know you're getting that fresh fresh. Okay, so here we go. I'm so pumped for this one. See this sauce? They have all sorts of different sauces. Basically, they have like your regular pudding with caramel, but they also have all these different flavors. They have three kinds of cheese, roasted matcha and orange, cherry sauce and pistachio, tamba black bean, soybean flour and fig. And today, I got the strawberry and candied green beans. Look at this. It comes in this sweet little case all homemade and all let me just take the first scoop oh look at that there you go that's intense i love the strawberry flavor right there it's like a nice strong jam taste and then the pudding itself is quite interesting because it's a little different than like, the pudding that you have and it's usually like super smooth whereas this one has a lot of texture to it this one is like on the opposite side almost has like a really smooth mashed potato texture mm. It has a mellow sweetness, so a very, very Japanese taste. And then this little green guy right here, this candied green bean. That's really sweet. <laughs> That's really sweet. And this one is a Kyo Matcha and Yuzu. Let's take a bite of this. Wow. 
It is so interesting. That'll knock your matcha in the dirt. That is a strong matcha flavor. If you want to go deep along the Japanese senses, then this is it. For Western people, like, this may be a little bit too much, I will have to say. You even have the yuzu peel in here. <laughs> like, give it, like, additional bitterness. <laughs> this is, like, very, very Japanese bitter. Like, this is the bitterness. If you like this one, this is, like, how you know someone loves Japan. <laughs> I think the sweetness goes well with the bitterness. You have to have, kind of, like, a little bit of the, the bitterness here and then, like, most of the pudding. And the thing, the more I have it, the more I like it. Hey, so before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Now with Fluid Engine, their next generation website design system, it helps anyone unlock their creativity with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. And start with the professional website templates, but then customize it like I did for my website to fit your own needs. Check out my homepage, it shows my latest video for both my channels. If you want to sell products online, physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has you covered. Sell custom merch, Squarespace has you covered. Want to accept online appointments? Guess what? Squarespace also has you covered. So there you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash paolo from tokyo and get 10 percent off your first domain or website number four gelato from shinpachi chaya this spot is an italian gelato shop but it has japanese flavors which is quite interesting so i had to show you let me take you inside on a hot day like this what better way to cool down than with some japanese gelato what what so this shop has won multiple gelato awards in italy but they're pulling it all out here in arashiyama basically they've taken true italian gelato and infused it with japanese ingredients and flavors making it all of their own so I got the sakura mochi which is kind of like a cherry blossom mochi flavor and I have tofu flavor where else can you get tofu this place has actually been around since 1941 and the shop was originally kind of like a restaurant but then it like converted over time and now it's become a gelato shop maybe I'll go with the sakura mochi there's a spoon here but I don't think I need a spoon Oh, that's interesting. Definitely get like that cherry blossom like leaf taste, but also it has an interesting texture. You think it's like super smooth, but in fact, it's quite grainy, like a rice texture, like almost if you were had sakura mochi. It looks like this. It has kind of like rice inside of it, and you can get that same kind of texture in this gelato. Oh, that's good. Also, it's like a little bit salted. I wonder why they put this little bear on here. Try this bear. Oh, that bear is really sugary. So let me just take a bite of this tofu. Oh, that is amazing. Like it's like real tofu, but like on the sweeter side. What's also interesting about this place is that you can actually change the flavor of the tofu by adding soy sauce. They actually have some soy sauce in the front that you can get. And here is the tofu in a cup. Here's the shoyu here. Poured a little bit of the soy sauce there. Soy sauce, here we go. Mmm! It gives it kind of that like mitarashi dango taste. That is actually good. Like, you know, do you think you're like putting soy sauce on there? It wouldn't be good at all, but it's rather delicious. It's a very Japanese flavor. Definitely recommended. And number five, Mapo Tofu and Spicy Meat Bun from Brother Tofu. So this spot just opened this last February and it's the only Mabadofu specialty shop in the area. Let me show you inside. What a name. This shop is a rising star in the area so it's definitely a must try. It only uses Kyotofu, a silky smooth tofu crafted with Kyoto's natural soft groundwater, low in iron. This is the Mara Nikuman. If you want to, you can actually take this one out and do your street food adventure. Keep on going with what you're doing. Just gonna do this raw style. Ready guys? That is spicy and the meat is just so succulent. The bun itself is moist, it's fluffy, it has a phenomenal chewy texture to it. It has small chunks of pork and big chunks of pork all mixed in here. It has a nice and fresh sweetness. You can see there's some onions in here. And then on top you have the sauce that just kind of infiltrates and infuses with the meat and the bun. It just gives it another level of spiciness. They have like the chilies like right here, but then the sancho level is like just a little bit higher right here. So you feel 
little more of the numbing than you do of like the chili, like spicy kick. This one is nice and moist. You can just see how like playful this bun is. You can probably just eat the bun by itself and it'd be good just as is. Wow, look at all of this food. I don't even want to eat it because it looks so beautiful, but I do want to eat it. Basically, you have mabudofu. You can see how red and luscious it is. Man, this is a really dark red. You can see kind of the chili oils all around. And then you have some kujo negi on top. You have an egg, you have some mushrooms, you have some duck, you have some more chili, rayu, pumpkin, pickles here, and then we have shrimp mayonnaise. Obviously, you have some rice. Oh, there's a lot of tofu in here. Let me just add it with some rice. So basically, I'll take some of this and throw it onto the rice like this, and then eat it just like that. Wow. Mmm. This is actually one of the better mabu tofus I've had in a long time. That is so flavorful. I love different flavors of spiciness in here. There's a subtle sweetness to it. I love how the onions just kind of round out some of the flavors there. Looks like some burnt black peppers or burnt chilies in here as well. Also, it kind of has like a miso y taste. So if you look and you find these little black beans, they're actually little fermented beans called tochi. Sometimes the mabu tofu gets a little bit plain and boring. But you know, they have a lot of stuff you can add in here. This is actually their homemade chili oil. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more of their chili oil just to make it a little bit more spicy. I'm gonna take some of these chili peppers, just sprinkle it on. You can see now I have their homemade chili oil as well as the red peppers. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this raw egg. Whoa, got everything in here all in one bite. Oh, look at that. That is amazing. Whoa, that is brilliant. Dude, I immensely recommend that. I don't know, that's some really good egg yolk. So there you go, if you want a full meal deal, then just come to this place. But that's it, this is my favorite spot in Arashima. Alright, so we're gonna finish this one together. So if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Good? Good?